The following program is available in high definition on channel 700. This program is designed and produced by the community with the support of TV Kojiko. Welcome to Oakville Matters. This is a program that looks at the things that matter to Oakville residents. And today we're looking at the old hospital site and what's going to happen to it when the new hospital opens at the end of this year. Now everybody's known this day has been coming for many years and uh, we have been taking our time to decide what to do there. And that's kind of an Oakville approach to things because we don't want to make the wrong decision and we don't want to create a whole bunch of unhappy people. With us today are Bill McLeod, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Mississauga Halton Local Health Integration Network, and Leanne Fernandez, who's the Senior Director of Health Systems and Community Engagement with the Lynn, and David Mallon. David is the long-serving president of the Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association, it's one of Oakville's oldest and most active uh, residence associations, and the TCRA, as they're, as they're known popularly around town, surround the old hospital site. David, uh, we have a, uh, a picture, a map view of the immediate area, and, uh, and you've got a copy in front of you, and, and if, we're, if we can assume the residents, I mean the, the viewers can see it, would you walk us through your neighborhood there? And, and just explain where everything is? Sure, I'd be happy to do that, Rob. Uh, the old Oakville Hospital is located in a very well-established area in uh, East Oakville, Southeast Oakville. Um, it's located between Allen Street and Reynolds Street, and uh, to the south, roughly speaking, from Shedden up to the northern boundary on McDonald Street. The southern portion of the site uh, will have some apartment buildings on it, uh, which are currently about to be constructed when the old medical building at Shedden is uh, closed in July of this year, and many of the doctors will be moving up to the new hospital site. Uh, just north of that is the Wyndham uh, long-term care facility, and then to the north of that is the old Oakville Trafalgar High School still standing after all these years, uh, but this will become the site for the new community and recreation center planned with some green space at the back of it, uh, fronting on to the garage which exists today. To the very north of the site, the northern third to one half, the area is currently planned for residential development and it is expected that this residential development will be consistent with the surrounding developed neighborhood with density approximately comparable to the density which exists at the present time. So those are the plans for the hospital lands after the hospital is closed in December of this year, I understand. Right. So um, uh, some residents know that uh, there's uh, quite a range of densities that have been discussed for this land. And, um, and there's some commentaries been had in public about how the Places to Grow Act requires high density and all kinds of ideas like that. But uh, as mayor, it's, uh, it's my pleasure to explain to anyone who's concerned about this that because the town is the land use planning authority, we decide what the, what the ultimate rules are on the ground in this case. And, uh, and we also are the landowner. We're unlikely to appeal ourselves to the Ontario Municipal Board so we can do what we want here. Or as I put it to a, a couple of residents associations meetings recently, we are masters of our own house on this matter. So I'm going to be supporting a, a low density plan for this area that matches the homes that surround it. Um, so Bill, one of the things that's uh, been uh, a great uh, concern for me and a great open question is what kind of health care if any will survive in the area we went through a period where there wasn't going to be any 
Uh, you've engaged in a lot of community consultation, which I applaud, and uh, you and Leanne have uh, presumably come to some conclusions about what people want. What do you know about what people want? What are they telling you? Well, certainly we're hearing that there needs to be a continued health presence, uh, particularly um, early on to look at seniors' issues, um, but the, uh, the kind of community fabric that is also emerging as well, that it's not just um, a seniors' enclave. There are new families coming and there may be other kinds of, um, of health services that need to be present uh, beyond. I've seen a lot of, of, of turnover, neighborhood turnover, a lot of young families, young kids, it's with the spring especially you see the kids kids are coming out to play that I didn't know were there before I mean I think the turnover is like it feels sudden mm -hmm. uh, I guess after a long hard winter yep. so you're gonna need more than just seniors that's music to my ears I'm glad to hear that recognition right. so so what 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 can you do um, so we're keen though to make sure that we look at the needs of the highest needs people uh, in any community. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very important part of the health care system. So is that seniors and kids? Uh, again, often it's kids. Uh, more often it is seniors um, in terms of what care needs are there. The, uh, the other thing is because of the city's view, vision of wanting to put a, a recreation center there, a community center, uh, we have a, um, a very strong interest in looking at linking health services with activity type services. There's a, a great belief uh, based, based on evidence, not just belief, that uh, activity and, and encouraging physical activity is one of the greatest pre preventative health activities that you can undertake. And so we're looking at, at uh, trying to figure out what are the symbiotic uses, a relationship that we could work with the city's uh, recreation department and the, and the city's vision of a community recreation center within a community health hub uh, that could, um, again, pursue the provision of health care services in that, in that environment. So, uh, Leanne, what kind of services have you been hearing are in demand? So when we've talked to the community, they have really expressed the interest for a one-stop shop. And to your point, while we're looking at absolutely the needs for that local community and serving it, we are looking at an intergenerational um, center, community hub, um, that really meets the needs and, and not only meets the needs of the community, but helps foster community. Um, it's got to be a center where people can go and access primary care, um, but also those allied services that would also support their care. So whether it's uh, physiotherapy, Therapy services or a dietitian or social work we'd like to house that in there as well there's that upstream piece that Bill talked about in terms of the recreational component but we also know mental health and addictions is a, is a key component both for our youth as well as our seniors we'd love to be able to create a center where people can go um, ensure that their their children are looked after as well as perhaps an aging parent that that parent can get the services so it really becomes a center where you can get the care that you need that fosters community you can look after yourself and keep yourself healthy um, and again becomes a place where people want to congregate but also um, meet their needs uh, from a health care perspective so um, are there places like your envisioning already or is this a, an invention uh, a creation that's coming organically out of the local circumstances so there actually are other places um, uh, like this and we have been out there visiting because we recognize um, the models are slightly different as we're looking at planning for those services within uh, Mississauga Halton and in particular Oakville again we want to be attuned to what are the needs of that community so so every hub model will be slightly different um, but I think it's important that we look at it from a holistic perspective. It is about the people we're serving, so we want to make sure that we're looking at them holistically so that it's not just about health in terms of the health care services, but you look at the social services and hence the recreation services. So again, you're looking at treating them from a, a truly holistic perspective that their needs are met. So if this is a wellness hub, I'm just inventing the name here, uh, in, in one corner of the town and we've got a hospital in the other corner of the town. Is that it or does this uh, wellness hub uh, replicate over time to other areas? How's the, what's the, the theory behind this? So ideally we would be situating hubs across, um, across 
the town of Oakville, as well as the Mississauga Halton Lynn, which is our jurisdiction. I think Premier Wynne has already um, advised her, she's, she's set up an advisory council to look at a framework around that, but it is something that the provincial government themselves have identified as a need going forward. Some of that, in, in our situation here with these lands, we have an opportunity to partner with the town to really create something. In other situations, I think um, we're looking at repurposing existing infrastructure, again, but to still create that model of a hub that meets the, the, the needs of, um, again, areas of high need. I think we really need to um, look at those populations or those vulnerable or marginalized communities where we can, again, create a center that really helps build that community. I get the idea that you guys went around and made a list of discrete services or needs that the population had rather than asking them, you know, uh, what do you want? Uh, a big, you know, kind of a big open question. And so it's almost the other end from a lot of people that talk to me go, well, I want a hospital there. And it sounds like what you've done is, is gone and says, well, uh, what is the exact program or service that you need? And what does that add up to? And it seems to add up to one of these hubs. Is that a fair description of the approach? I think it's fair to say that um, putting a hospital there wasn't on the, on the table. I mean, it really wasn't anything that we um, uh, felt that, that uh, we could go back to government and say, no, we know you've built a big new hospital in the north part of Oakville. Now we want to have you come back and build a smaller version of that at that site. It, well, we have six parts of town. It, it would kind of start to imply six hospitals in Oakville. Right. Uh, I can right. imagine Queen's Park balking at that idea. Um, so, so what we really said is that certain things were off the table, but uh, we're really open to, to hearing from people about what then should be on the table, uh, other than those things that are ruled out. I know we had previous discussions about whether long-term care beds um, could become part of this. Um, one of the things we're looking at is whether Wyndham Manor uh, could in fact have uh, further expansion of long-term care on, on that site. It's a center of expertise in seniors' uh, uh, care at the, at the very end of of seniors care and and I think we can can look at either building on that or in fact augmenting that with things like seniors daycare um, as opposed to long-term care um, seniors temporary care so people that need to maybe come into a seniors care residence for some period of time but then will ideally go back home again once they're rejuvenated and and, and reinvigorated as opposed to staying in a long-term care home so these are all models that we're uh, we're really exploring uh, vigorously not just in our Lynn but across the province and um, we are really keen if this if this can work in a partnership with the city with the town we would really like to look for other partnerships with the town uh, to move this forward um, uh, across the, the town of Oakville. So uh, as a result of the town asking you to look at this, we could get a big ask back in terms of looking at it elsewhere. Yes. Well, that would be fair. <laughs> um, David and, and I are looking forward to really jumping into the details here in just a minute after we take a short break, because uh, we, we think you want to know how soon will all these evaluations of models uh, lead to something concrete? Uh, when will we know and what will we uh, be able to look forward to? So we'll explore all of those questions in just a second when, when we're back after this break. Welcome back. Today we're talking about the future of the old Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital site. And with us are two wonderful people from the Mississauga Halton Local Health Integration Network, Bill McLeod and Leanne Fernandez. I call them wonderful because before the break they were telling us a pretty exciting vision for a community health hub or a wellness hub. Uh, they didn't object when I renamed it a wellness hub. Uh, David uh, Mallon, the president of Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association, the community that surrounds the hospital, was beaming as he heard it described. And David, I think you have a question or two. Well, a question or two and a comment or two, Rob. Uh, first of all, good news. We're very pleased to hear it. If there's anything we can do to help you with your 
uh, assessing the needs of the community. The residents' associations all have capability to go into the community uh, through email and electronic means and conduct surveys. If that would be helpful, be assured of our support. Um, but uh, I should say that the community, particularly seniors in the existing community, are very concerned about the loss of a medical facility, the hospital, and concerned about the, uh, the migration of doctors to the new hospital, and uh, are concerned there is locally no uh, obvious option for them in terms of immediate medical care. Uh, so your, your proposals for some form of family health hub a uh, wellness hub uh, in the area both make sense uh, and certainly would be supported by the local community. Uh, we would naturally like to know when and where uh, and exactly what uh, you have in mind, uh, but um, I'm not sure whether you're in a position to answer those questions at this point or not, but uh, well, those would be the next questions. Let's go after when. I think that's got to be the burning question in every viewer's mind. So, Bill, what is your time frame for this? Well, it, uh, with apologies, some of it will be driven by the time frame of the city in terms of taking ownership. Um, ideally, uh, the construction of a, of a facility, we would like to see it um, in some way interlinked so that the space in the community recreation center, uh, which will probably have peaks in the mornings and the evenings and, and less, less traffic in, in the middle of the day, that we can use uh, that as a synergistic space. And so ideally, you'd be thinking about constructing both the community center and the community health hub um, in roughly the same, uh, same time space. And, and um, that means we're gonna be working with the city actively uh, to try to get to, uh, to a, a common set of time frames that make sense for both, uh, both parties. Uh, we think that, uh, as David's uh, right, is that as soon as the hospital leaves, the, the need will emerge. Um, nature abhors a vacuum. Uh, one of the things that could conceivably happen is a, um, a walk-in clinic or a number of other kinds of opportunistic processes could emerge that, that move in to provide that sort of uh, direct medical drop-in service. And while walking, where would they move in to the well, old hospital? No, uh, I'm assuming there's rental spaces in the surrounding area. Um, okay. So, um, well, again, there certainly are downtown. Yep. And uh, if for a year or two uh, you were there, uh, that would be a welcome boost to another worry point for everyone in town and council. Um, so. Uh, I think David and I and all the other residents would uh, encourage you in that. But ideally what we're looking for is a, is a family health uh, team concept uh, that, that really has that continuity of care in mind, not just episodic that a, a typical walk-in clinic has, has the ability to refer you to a specialist. Um, normally when you go into a walk-in clinic, um, if you're not a regular patient there um, and you need to see a specialist as part of your follow-up, the walk-in clinic can't deal with that. Uh, the way they deal with it is say you need to go to the emergency department, they can refer you to a specialist or you need to go back to your family doctor and try to get an appointment with them. And so that um, we think isn't really good integrated care and so ideally we're going to have um, the primary care focus there that can handle that uh, that more integrated concept with care. Be connected to your hospital record, uh, which the primary care family health teams are now. So uh, if, you, if you show up there, even if your doctor isn't working, um, they have access to, to your hospital record and your family health record uh, because they're part of your, your circle of care uh, from that perspective. So those are all things that we'd like to see. Um, we want to test our, our vision uh, with residents, make sure that we're not kind of off uh, on a lark of our own, um, but really are talking about things that the residents would see as valuable. So it's a very iterative uh, uh, planning and development process. Uh, that will add some time, but we think um, what, from what we know of the city's time frame, um, th that we've got some time to do that iterative planning before the city would be ready to uh, proceed with development on this site. Mm, maybe I can shock you on that front. But first, let's deal with this question of, we know that in, in the middle of December or the end of December, this is gonna shut down, the, the old OTMH is gonna shut down and the new one's gonna light up. Uh, and we know that if, um, if all of the stars aligned, it takes a certain amount of time to take down a building, uh, uh, 
we actually, I, I, I don't mean to say that because we plan to build the rec center where the OT mm -hmm. uh, HS is, but still that has to be taken, you know, most of that's unusable. We'll, we have to take that down and then build something new. So uh, you're looking at two years if everything goes uh, as connectedly as possible. And we've had a lot of success with constructing facilities in Oakville on time and, and realistically. So I'm, I'm not at all fussed about uh, the danger that that would take longer than two years. But there's people who don't want to wait two years for the first sign of anything to show up. They'd like you to, to have something in place in the rental space by January. Uh, and are you going to be able to do that? That's unlikely that by January we could have a presence there. Um, and just again, the realistic time frames of uh, budget cycles, that's within this year's budget cycle. And right now, uh, from what we know of the province's uh, existing uh, budget, which was just tabled, it's going to be a very restrictive budget this year. Uh, so it's more likely that this would be into the 2016-17 the uh, budget year that these kinds of dollars that would allow a new service to emerge at that site uh, would be available. So you're talking not before April, May of 2016? For rental type sir, yep. uh, presence. Um, we certainly are already uh, lining up um, potential uh, occupants that, that um, for a variety of reasons would like to be in this kind of a hub and beginning discussions with them. Again, the problem it would be if they're already in rental premises, they've got to either eat the, uh, the end of that lease um, as an extra cost um, until they can get a sublease uh, or whatever, um, uh, or, or time their, their move to, uh, to, to coincide with the end of their existing lease. Yeah. And that would, that's one of those c beautiful cases where the interests of the taxpayer to have the service are uh, conflicted or contradicted by the interests of the taxpayer not to see any wasted money. Yes. So you've got to be under the gun on that all the time. Uh, exactly. I think that's why I don't want your job. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the town has a, has a vision of six unique uh, community centers or recreation centers. I, I grew up calling them rec centers and I'm learning, I'm teaching myself to say community center, but uh, we have six areas of town. There's a, a unique one at Iroquois Ridge, mm -hmm. uh, there's a unique one at, at River Oaks, there's a unique one in Glen Abbey. We took an abandoned high school in uh, the southwest and turned it into a unique uh, community center. It's a community and cultural center. Uh, we're planning to rebuild Oakville Arena and relocate a senior center down the street that's too small up, up there so it'll become a, a, basically a community and senior center. Um, maybe the, the brand for this will be when we get there in two years, and uh, I'll footnote two years isn't guaranteed, but uh, when we get there, uh, community and wellness center. Uh, but it's, it's good for people to have a, a, a kind of image, a brand that they can, so they understand what's coming. And I'm uh, getting head nods, meaning that that might be oh, yeah. the way to label this. No, I mean, there's a really neat vision of synergy here because, as you know, I mean, economics are economics and you can't change the laws of economics. So one of the things that oh, we always try that. One of the things that faces development in you know, urban centers like uh, Oakville um, is the land costs start to go up. Um, uh, and it becomes very expensive to look at um, a development if the city um, has actually already control of those lands and, and could say, you know, the density um, would be acceptable to add a building that was uh, kind of uh, synergistic to the existing recreation center. It will certainly change the density, but uh, again, you folks are in, in control of the density issues uh, for, for that kind of equation. So well, the, the density <laughs> usually refers to the residential population. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, if we build a community center or a rec center that also has space uh, that I assume you want to rent on some mm -hmm. long-term basis. Uh, he's, he's nodding. Remember that that was a yes. Market rate, I think. We yeah. And uh, and we'll find a we'll, we'll find a market rate that'll be good to you. We're negotiating live right now, <laughs> live on TV. We've been making news all half hour long here. Uh, really, when you start and think about it, um, we uh, uh, that wouldn't be a density issue and and. Uh, and, and I believe the town could happily go into an arrangement like that because we have gone into arrangements like that 
Uh, we have an arrangement like that at Pine Glen uh, and uh, Third Line where we have uh, uh, an, uh, an amazing uh, indoor FIFA international soccer field and, and that's in a long-term agreement with the Oakville yeah. Soccer Club. And on a smaller basis, we've done the same thing with the gymnastics club in Glen Abbey. This is a kind of, I mean, it's an innovative approach, and Very the right. town has done them before. Uh, I didn't even invent them. Uh, you know, it's, it's something Oakville's come up with all on its own. So I, I don't feel any hesitation in saying we could do that. Uh, the timing, uh, uh, I know that everybody's interested in what the timing will be. And I guess uh, the mayoral thing to say is we have a 10-year capital budget and it's going to be debated in September at council and, uh, and the way a 10-year capital budget works is you've got roughly $800 million worth of capital projects to build and you can do about $80 million a year and so there's a, a, a long discussion as to whose project is when. and. Uh, uh, Everything in Oakville is decided by a 13-member council, and that means uh, a yes or a no requires seven votes. So uh, everybody needs to be friendly to each other, and there has to be a little bit of consideration as you, as you push and pull these things. I imagine the Lynn has a little bit of a similar problem around its capital projects, because yes. you've got a big territory two problems. Uh, one is uh, getting that uh, consensus from uh, from not only within Ireland but also from government because uh, th they have a responsibility to distribute capital dollars across the whole province. So, um, but you're good for this. Uh, our timing is, is uh, uh, David, our, our timing is, as I've indicated, out to September. I imagine you'll be there with your residence association. Shall indeed be there, Rob, uh, assisting you and council, hopefully, in making the right decision and moving forward with this. I think the community would be very pleased to hear from the Lynn that there is uh, a commitment to establish a facility in this area, uh, recognizing it still has to be developed as to exactly what that facility is. Uh, and we'll be equally pleased to hear from the mayor that um, uh, this could proceed as early as 2016, uh, but the permanent facility uh, looks like it's on track for 2018, if I've understood you correctly, Mayor. Uh, that will depend on the will of council in September. One of the things that I guess we could wind up with is the, the 11 uh, residence associations uh, across the cent south center and southeast of town came together and unanimously uh, came to a position about what they wanted in facilities. They came to council and, and their unity persuaded council to support them. And, and if, uh, if you can achieve that kind of unity again, you'll find great dividends from that approach. Oakville is a town that really likes consensus. We're out of time. This has been one of the best discussions we've had on this subject. I know that this matters to Oakville quite a lot and I hope you'll join us again the next time that we talk about Oakville Matters.